Notes Composition of Functions. Composition of functions can be written in two ways, g of f of x and g of f of x. Both ways are read g of f of x. Just like order of operations, you should do the inside function first. In this, we're going to have two functions. Our f of x is going to be x cubed. And our d of x is x squared plus 3. We're trying to find f of g of 2. We can also write this f of g of 2 with the nested parentheses. Regardless of the method shown, we need to do g of 2 first because that's the inside function. I'm showing g function in green, g of 2 is the inside, and the f function on the outside, the f function is the blue function. So the first thing we're going to do for this is to start out and take 2 and plug 2 into the g function. To plug 2 into the g function, we're plugging in 2 for x in x squared plus 3. So that's 2 squared plus 3, which is 4 plus 3, which is 7. Now that we've gotten 7 out of the g function, we're going to take that 7 and we're going to plug it in to the f function. So what is the value for g of 2? That's 7. Now go into f of x equals x cubed. What will you use for x this time? We're going to use x equals 7. So f of 7 is 7 cubed, which is 343. 343 is the output for f. So overall, we can say that f of g of 2 is equal to 343. Now we're going to use the same functions as above, and we're going to find f of g of negative 4. First, we need to find g of negative 4. To find g of negative 4, we're going to plug negative 4 in for the x in g of x, which gives us negative 4 squared, which is 16, 16 plus 3, which is 19. So 19 was the output from g of negative 4. Now we need to find f of 19. We're going to go back and we're going to plug our answer from the g function into the f function. f function says to cube the value. When we cube 19, we get 6,859. Obviously, we'd have a calculator for that one. That's our final answer. Let's do one more. For this new function, f of x is going to be x minus 2, and g of x is now going to be 3x plus 10. We're supposed to find g of f of 6. This can be written with little nested parentheses with the f of 6 inside the g of 6. Do you remember where to start? Where do we start in order of operations? We need to start with the inside function. So for this one, we're finding g of f of 6. The first thing I need is to find f of 6. f of 6 means plug 6 in for x f of 6 is equal to 4, so now I need to find g of 4. To find g of 4, I'm plugging 4 into the g function. That means I have 3 times 4 plus 10, which is 12 plus 10, which is 22. 22 is the answer to g of f of 6. In the next one, we're going to find f of g of x. This one's written a little differently because we don't have a number plugged in for the x. We're still finding f of g of x, which we can rewrite with the g of x plugged inside the f of x. This time, we're plugging in the whole function, not just a number. So I need to plug the whole thing, 3x plus 10, which was equal to g of x, into the f function. 
the f function was x minus 2. I'm putting the g in there of 3x plus 10. Last, I just need to follow order of operations and combine these things. I do addition and subtraction in order from left to right. So I have 3x and then I put my 10 and my minus 2 together to give me a plus 8. On the back of the sheet, we have function charts. In this one, we have our g function. For our g function, the x's are in the first bubble and the y's are in the second bubble. So if I were to look at what this first line means, the first line means g of 0 is equal to negative 4 because when I put x equals 0 in, the y value that I get out is negative 4. My second group is the f function. In the f function, I still have the x column first and the y column second. Again, what this line means on the top here is that f of 0 is equal to 1. In this example, I want to find f of g of 2. So the first thing I need to do is find the inside. I need to figure out what g of 2 is equal to. I go into my chart, g of 2 is equal to 0. Now I need to take my output from g of 2 and plug that into f. So I'm finding f of 0. I'm going to go into my f chart on the right here, and I plug 0 in, and what I get out is 1. So f of 0 is equal to 1. That means that g, or sorry, f of g of 2 is equal to 1. In the next example, I'm finding g of f of 1. For this one, I have f of 1 on the inside. So I'm going to start out, and I'm going to put 1 into my f function. When I plug 1 into f, the y value that I got out is a 3. So f of 1 is equal to 3. Now I need to take that answer and plug it into my g function. So I'm trying to find g of 3. g of 3 is 2. So the answer to my composition, what is g of f of 1? The answer is 2. Look at the chart and try to figure out why f of g of 0 does not exist. If I'm trying to find f of g of 0, that means the first thing I need to do is find g of 0. When I look at my table, I can look g of 0 is negative 4. So that part of this composition exists. But what I have to do next is find f of negative 4. Am I allowed to plug negative 4 into the f function? When I look at my f function, my only inputs are 0, 1, 2, and 3, and 4. So f of negative 4 does not exist, and it does not exist because negative 4 is not in f's domain. We couldn't plug that into f in the first place. Pause the video while you do some of the try these. Let's start out with just doing number 1, and then I'll go over that one, and we'll see how we're doing. Pause the video while you try number 1. For this one, I'm finding f of g of 2. I need to start out and find g of 2 first. To find g of 2, I plug 2 into g of x. When I plug 2 into g of x, I have 3 times 2 plus 1, which is 7. Next, I'm going to take 7 and plug it into f. When I plug into f, I'm supposed to square the 7, and 7 squared is equal to 49. Try the rest of these examples while you pause the video and check your answers. Number two is g of f of zero. So I start out, I plug zero into f, which gives me zero as an output. 
Then I plug that into G, which gives me 1 as a final answer. Number 3 is f of g of negative 3. So I plug negative 3 into g, which gives me negative 8. I then plug that into f, which gives me 64. Remember, when you square a negative number, a negative times a negative equals a positive. If you're doing that squaring on your calculator, you have to write that in parentheses. For number 4, I'm finding g of f of 1, so I plug 1 into f, which when I square it gives me 1. Then I plug that 1 as an answer into g, which when I times by 3 and add 1, I get 4. I'm going to do 5, 6, 7, and 8 all at one time while you pause the video. Here are the answers for 5, 6, 7, and 8. In number 5, you had f of f of 3. When you have f of f of 3, you have to plug 3 into f. You get out 9 as your answer, and then you take that 9 and you plug it back into f again to get out a final answer of 81. Number 6 was g of g of 4. So first I find g of 4, which gave me 13. Then I take that 13, plug it back into G again to get a final answer of 40. Number 7 and 8 had letters in what you were finding. So if you're finding F of G of T, your answer is typically going to have T's in it. In this one, we do G of T first. G of T means replace the X in G of X with a T. So that gives me 3T plus 1. Then I'm going to take 3t plus 1 and plug it into f. f squares, so when we square 3t plus 1, we can either do FOIL or we can multiply using boxes, which I did down here. I have to remember that I have four terms when I do that, and when I combine my like terms of my 3t and my 3t, I have 9t squared plus 6t plus 1. The final one was number 8, g of f of x, so I plug the f of x function, which was x squared, into the g of x function, and in that one I have 3 times x squared, which I would normally just write as 3x squared, and the plus 1 on the end.